Good morning, good afternoon, welcome to the GPP Chin Music Podcast. Of course, I'm Big Italy 42 and he is Beach at Beachhead 50, Josh Shepardson. And uh, as usual, another big slate of games, 14 games tonight. Unfortunately, um, the one pitcher that you and I had any sort of faith in, <laughs> or I say, I'll say the most faith in, um, as we're looking at today's slate, Dallas Keuchel. Looks like he's in a great spot today and he's pitching at 2 o'clock. So if you want yourself some Dallas Keuchel, you have to... Play the all-day slate. You go ahead and do that. You will not see my name in those all-day slates with the 1 and 2 o'clock game. But uh, either way, we, we play with what we have. And uh, there should be a lot of good GPP plays tonight. A lot of uh, a lot of good action tonight. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to be another fun night. Yeah, it's funny you say that. Like My first thing that I do when I research every day is uh, I hop on uh, SPR Forum and I check out their, their betting lines and I check out the, the totals and the, the lines because they have them listed for all the different online sports books and, and Vegas sports books. And I'm looking and if you know anything about sports betting, you know that the uh, they're not listed by time that the games start. They're listed by betting rotation. So I'm looking and like right in the middle of the page, I'm like Dallas Keuchel minus 162 against the A's. The A's don't hit lefties. I'm like, well, that's an easy pick for my top pitcher. And then I take a look over to the to the right of the uh, the rotate the betting rotation number, and I'm like 210. I'm like, god damn it! Like <laughs> Dallas Keuchel would have been so easy to pencil in as one of your SPs. Definitely the safest cash games pick. So if you are an afternoon gamer, get yourself some Dallas Keuchel. But I mean, there is another name that I do love tonight. Uh, you and I are in agreement and. Pretty much everybody and their brother is going to be in agreement. Whether you're in GPPs or cash games, I don't care that his ownership is going to be fairly high. You want Tyson Ross tonight. He's facing a Cubs team that strikes out a ton. We saw it last night. They struck out a ton against James Shields. Uh, punched out a couple times against Craig Kimbrell in the ninth. I mean, Tyson Ross brings double-digit strikeout potential to the table against a very uh, swing-and-miss happy Cubs roster that really isn't particularly good against righties even when they are making contact. They obviously have some good hitters in that lineup. Former Padre Anthony Rizzo immediately comes to mind, but a lot of strikeout potential for Ross. Ross does a good job of keeping the ball on the ground. Low betting total, great ballpark. I'm using him in GPPs and cash games. Um, and again, like, ownership be damned. I'm not going to be starting my GPP night by uh, having another – Anibal Sanchez disaster like last night. Yeah, and uh, fortunately, uh, I, I avoided the Liriano, who was terrible. Very few shares of Sanchez. But yeah, if you have one of those two guys, seemingly safe picks last night got rocked. Um, I think my days of taking lefties against the Twins are over for now. Looking at that, I saw their last thing. They've went out won eight games in a row, averaging over eight runs a game against lefties. So that's an interesting stat there. And Like you said about the Cubs. They did finally win something. It's not a World Series, but now they're back to first place in strikeout rate against <laughs> righties. So congratulations to the Cubbies there. I'm all about Tyson Ross. I'm with you there. Really the only thing not going his favor is the walk rate. But if he can navigate that, keep his pitch count down, I mean, he's got massive upside. And nobody else that you really feel great about. Um, other options, obviously. Jake Odorizzi is the guy that yep. I like to play a lot. Um he hasn't had the strikeout rate that he had last year, but he also hasn't had the fly ball rate and home run issues that he had last year. So, you know, you can't have it all with him, but he's got big time upside, and uh, it's a fine matchup for him against Atlanta right now, tonight. Yeah, I'm going to be on Odorisi as well. Nice betting line. Uh, he's a betting favorite, so he's a guy that I like in uh, in GPPs especially. Um, let's, just, let's just put it this way. If you're not owning Tyson Ross on like upwards of 80% of your cash games teams, then you're really putting yourself behind the eight ball. So going forward, any other pitchers we reference, you can pretty much consider GPP picks only, yep. uh, fitting the theme of the pod. Uh, I do like Odorisi. Uh, he's definitely in my rotation of guys to use tonight. I'll add a couple other names to that mix and say uh, a couple of volatile young flamethrowers in Carlos Martinez uh, facing a Mets team that has struggled with right-handed pitchers this year. Small underdog, but the game has just a seven betting total on it, so not expected to score a lot of runs, not a lot of left-handed bats to take advantage of his platoon issues. So I do like Martinez. You will have a little bit of a sweat if his control is not where it needs to be, but it is a low betting total, and he does have immense strikeout upside. Uh, I'm going to go with another option as well uh lefty carlos rodan betting totals at eight but he is a betting favorite uh pinnacle shows him at minus 132 right now opposing sean markham who who even knew that sean markham was still alive and throwing baseballs i certainly did not me um but he gets a very lefty dominant indians lineup uh which is 
prominently features mostly left-handed batters that are better against righties. So uh, Rodon struggled against an A's team that isn't very good against lefties, but let's be honest, it wasn't a stuff issue with Rodon. He just couldn't locate. If he's finding the strike zone, we saw what his first start was capable of. He struck out eight in that, even walked a few batters. Um, it's not a perfect comp because they're not the same player. I don't expect the uh, same results throughout his career, but Rodon, to me, is a lot like Francisco Liriano. He can work around the walks and keep the ball on the ground when he needs to. Has that blazing fastball that's backed by a really nice uh, wipeout slider when he's when he's sharp. And uh, I think that that's the kind of upside that you're looking for. Maybe you don't necessarily get a deep start. Maybe it's only five or six innings, but you might get double-digit punch outs in there if his slider's really biting and he's finding his spot. So uh, definitely a boomer bust option, but that's what you're looking for in GPPs. You want guys with that big strikeout upside that, Yes, you have to take on some risk, but uh, if it pays off, it pays off in a big way. Yeah, I'm with you there, and uh, I got another interesting option for you here. Speaking of upside, and speaking of uh, actually a good matchup, Drew Hutchison um, at home today against the Angels. Obviously, the Angels intimidating in name only right now. They're actually last in the league against right-handed pitching. Aaron Sanchez went seven and third on him, Mister. I've been walking 18 percent of batters and getting rocked, Aaron Sanchez. So. Drew Hutchinson, much better stuff than Aaron Sanchez. Uh, just around a 20% strikeout rate this year, but we've seen his big upside, and his last two games have been really impressive. Um, you look at what he's done against uh, Boston, 6Ks in five innings, seven hits a walk, and then uh, at Houston, 9Ks in six innings. So you're not expecting huge strikeout numbers, but the Angels have been terrible against righties, and I think that people still haven't come around to wanting to target them, but Drew Hutchinson's a well above average righty in my opinion, and uh, I think he's in a fine spot to put up a big number tonight. Yeah, and it gets back to chasing strikeouts, and uh, if you can keep those fly balls in the yard, Roger Center is a tough environment to do that in, but not a lot, not a lot of left-handed bats for him to navigate in that lineup. Uh, obviously, Cole Calhoun, who we saw go deep yesterday, but Barely. beyond that, Trout, I mean, Trout's a righty, but we know he hammers everybody, um, but beyond them, switch hitting Eric Ibar is not really a threat to take him deep. Um, so yes, Ibar has a platoon advantage, but not the type of hitter that we're really concerned with against Hutchison, so I like the call as well. He should be uh, on that short list of, of names to use in GPPs. Yeah, did you see that Calhoun home run, by the way? I mean, we're yes. talking like four inches over the wall at best. I mean, didn't look like a power stroke, but hey, you know what? Counts the same as the Nelson Cruz home run last night. Well, maybe not that home run because it was a three-run shot, but I mean, they all count the same. Maybe they aren't all worth the same when you see them, but either way. Um, he still makes for an interesting play tonight, but we'll get to him in a couple minutes. Um, elsewhere, Wei Yin Chin is a guy against uh, a predominantly, well, maybe not predominantly lefty, but a, a lineup who's most of their best hitters outside of Nelson Cruz are lefties. So he's an interesting play tonight. He's been pitching really well. Um, did well against the Angels, seven Ks last time out, seven Ks against the Yankees. I mean, you're 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 reaching if you're expecting seven Ks from him again tonight. But at the same time, you know, he's in a fine spot against a Seattle team that they're about league average against lefties. Uh, 14th in Team Wolf at 326, only striking out 17% of the time. But one thing that Chen has always been pretty good at is eating up innings. So if he pitches deep, maybe gets you four or five strikeouts, he could be an interesting tournament play just around 7K tonight. Yeah, and uh, one name that I'm going to caution against using because I imagine that he's going to have some ownership uh, based on his uh, standing as what looks like the biggest betting favorite right now is Shane Green. Uh, we watched, and this isn't just a case of the Brewers, pummeling Anibal Sanchez last night, but Green did undergo an MRI on his elbow, was dealing with some discomfort. Obviously, he's in line for the start, so they don't have any concerns there, but um, the fact that it was sore enough that he got the MRI would definitely be alarming for me um, to the point that I, I, I just don't feel comfortable using him tonight. Big batting total there, so um, if you do see that big favorite line and say, hey, you know, I'm going to get some shares of him. Oh, sorry, second biggest betting favorite. Joe Kelly just edges him out, it looks like. But um, if you see that big betting favorite line and say, yeah, he's my, better than minus 150, I, I'm going to get some shares of him. He should be a safe bet for a win. Uh, you might want to pump the brakes there a little bit. Um, I, I understand the logic, but um, if you haven't been fa paying attention, he may not be 100%. We certainly don't want to take pitchers that are less than 100%. Yeah, especially this price tag on FanDuel. I mean, that's pretty much saying the Tigers' offense and bullpen are more favored than he is. And, yeah. you know, very pedestrian 14% strikeout rate anyway, so you don't have much upside with him in GPPs anyway. I'm with you. He's a stay away for me. Um, elsewhere, Chase Anderson is a guy that's been pitching well. 
Um, I still, I'm still not much of a believer. He's not a big strikeout guy, but he's a guy that you know he can pitch six, seven solid innings. And we know the Marlins among the worst in the league against right-handed pitching. Just a 104 team ISO. So I mean that's, and I'm pretty sure about 103 of that <laughs> belongs to John Carlos Stanton. <laughs> so you know, 21.4 percent strikeout rate for them. Six worst in the league against righties. I think that he's an interesting option you could throw in as your SP2, but yep. I don't think he would be my uh, single, uh, my only starting pitcher ever. No, and on the multi-pitcher sites, you do have to find guys like Anderson. Got a low batting total on that game, seven and a half runs. He is an underdog, so he should be low owned. Um, definitely think that that is a fair call as well. Yeah, and uh, interesting thing, nine pitchers, 5K or below on DraftKings, and zero of them that I will be playing in any of my contests tonight. I will be picking on them. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They will be in there, but they'll be giving up hits, not getting hits and not getting strikeouts. Um, without that, with further, without further ado, I should say, I can't talk today. Uh, moving on to catcher here. If you're paying up a catcher, who's your top play tonight? Uh, mine is Russell Martin, uh, at least in GPPs. I think that he's going to be fairly low owned because he's getting a right-handed pitcher today. Um, everybody wants to hop on the Jays. I'm certainly uh, in that camp when they face a lefty. Uh, the lineup still has some thump, especially the top of it, against right-handed pitching. They're facing Jared Weaver tonight. Weaver has a big uh, fly ball rate, which is great for this lineup. If Martin gets on, chance he gets driven in by by one of the boppers behind him. I also like his chances of reaching the seats. Rogers Center is very favorable for right-handed power. So I think that he's a, a strong GPP play. He's also the most expensive catcher on FanDuel, second most expensive catcher on DraftKings. So you're probably looking at low ownership just based on price. Uh, catcher, very popular position to punt. So when you do get a big game from, from the position and you are one of those who kind of goes against the grain and is willing to spend up there, you're going to get an edge over your uh, competition. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I'm going to throw Buster Posey in the mix here. Guy, it's finally starting gets to get a lefty. Going. Yeah, he gets a lefty and Brett Anderson, who he's not a bad lefty by any means. He's, he's about an average lefty, if you ask me, but more of a contact pitcher than anything, not a big strikeout guy. We saw Buster Posey kind of get his, uh, his, his bat going. Um, obviously, at Houston and at Cincinnati are much different than being at San Francisco. But uh, 3.7K for him on FanDuel. Is a really intriguing price, and 4.2 on uh, DraftKings I like as well. I think he's going to be um, one of my favorite GPP options because I do think he'll be lower on than a guy like Russell Martin. But I think both guys might fly under the radar because, like you said, you know people like to save a catcher, especially in tournaments. You like to go with cheap guys with power. So I think these two guys might, uh, might end up with some low ownership on a 14-game slate. Yeah, and Posey's the easy choice in cash games. Uh, much higher floor than than Martin, but uh, as you said, uh, because he's at home, probably going to be lower ownership than there should be uh, with him facing a lefty, and not not a great lefty. We're not talking about facing Dodgers lefty Clayton Kershaw. We're talking about him facing Dodgers lefty Brett Anderson. Much different. Um, so he is definitely a very strong play as well. Doesn't have the park factors working in his favor. Probably doesn't have the home run upside of Martin as a result, but does have multi-hit upside, does have multi-run uh, scored RBI potential as well. Um, based on lineup spot, based on, on facing a lefty again. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I got a bare minimum guy for you here who isn't quite ready to catch yet, but fortunately he can hit, he can DH tonight. Devin Messerocco, $2,200. We know that Jeremy Guthrie, much, much worse against lefties, but he's not exactly a world beater against righties either. Messerocco was in the lineup batting eighth last night, got two hits, had a walk, got on base all three times. Bare minimum salary for a guy with a ton of power. I mean, I don't care that he can't catch right now. To get a guy with his kind of upside at men's salary on FanDuel is going to be a lock for me in most of my tournament lineups because you can do a lot elsewhere with that. Yep, and even at DraftKings, not bare minimum, but $3,600 isn't exactly uh, taking much of a bite out of your, your salary cap. So really like Mesoraco a lot as well. Uh, price similarly to him, and by similarly, I mean exactly the same on uh, DraftKings. Derek Norris against the lefty. Yeah. Always like Derek Norris. 3600 on DraftKings. So Yoshiwada is a pitcher that does not have overpowering stuff. Really relies on location and secondary pitches. Um, and Norris... Typically gets a favorable lineup spot against the lefty. So I uh, do like Derek Norris quite a bit. And uh, with, with Justin Morneau sidelined with his concussion issues, Willian Rosario has been playing first base. Better against lefties and righties. But if you want some exposure to Coors Field on the cheap, $3,600 for, for Willian Rosario. I believe he hit fifth yesterday. 
Um, he was fifth or sixth, definitely in the heart of that that lineup. And uh, it's at Coors Field. Severino Gonzalez, uh, rookie pitcher who doesn't really have overwhelming stuff. And uh, I, I like Rosario even in a matchup with a right-handed pitcher because it is at Coors and it is cheap exposure to that uh, to that favorable run uh, scoring environment. Yeah, ten run total. You're going to want yourself some exposure, uh, especially with two pretty awful pitchers on the mound. It doesn't get much better than tonight at Coors Field. So. I'm with you there. Let's move on here to first base. Um, some interesting options. Jose Abreu gets Sean Markham, who we already mentioned. Uh, who the hell is Sean Markham, you might be asking. If you haven't been following baseball for years, you might not even know who Sean Markham is. And uh, <laughs> You don't really need to worry about it. What you need to worry about is that Jose Abreu is 3.6K on FanDuel. And, yeah, I mean, you're not going to have a lot of worries if you can get Jose Abreu at that kind of price and this kind of matchup. Like we said a couple times recently, I mean, this, he's not hitting a lot of home runs right now. He's only got six on the season, only one in his last ten games. But every single day, he's getting on base, he's scoring runs, he's being productive, he's getting big hits. So that that big night is coming. And uh, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if that night was tonight against uh, pretty awful Sean Markham at home at U.S. Cellular. Yeah, man, the cell, great environment for hitting for power. Markham, not a big ground ball pitcher, so I, I'm I'm on a Brayu. And I'll say it, I'll take it for you. I won't make you be the guy to to, to, to trump at him again. Uh, same price point, Joey Votto gets Jeremy Guthrie. Jeremy Guthrie is worthless against left-handed batters. Votto offers $3,600 exposure on FanDuel. Cheap on DraftKings as well, $4,600. That's a full $1,200 cheaper than, than Paul Goldschmidt. $900 cheaper than Jose Abreu. $800 cheaper than Miguel Cabrera. You get the idea. He's underpriced. He's left-handed. No, he's not at home. He's not at Great American Ballpark. But... He is uh, getting Guthrie, and that platoon advantage is really hard to ignore at that price point. Uh, really like Votto a lot. Um, another guy that I like, similarly priced on on uh, DraftKings, forty nine hundred dollar Eric Hosmer. Uh, another guy that I think kind of gets lost because he's not that big power hitting first baseman. We all fall in love with the Goldschmidt's and Rizzo's and Cabrera's and Adrian Gonzalez's and. And Hosmer, all he does is hit. I mean, he's provided some power this year. And Jeremy Guthrie, or I'm sorry, Jason Marquis is basically a worse version of Jeremy Guthrie. Yeah. Really struggles with left-handed batters as well. Also struggles with righties, which is nice because uh, it elevates Hosmer's floor being around some other right-handed batters that can take advantage of the fact that Marquis just not good against any hitter. So I uh, really like Hosmer a lot. I just don't ever see his ownership sky high because people just are not enamored with these first basemen that are, you know, 35, 40 home run threats annually. So I do like Hosmer quite a bit. Yeah, and even his teammate Kendris Morales in a, a nice spot. He's always low owned, and he's pretty cheap, especially on Fandle at 2,700. So I don't mind him either. Yeah, definitely. And uh, I'll go back to the well again tonight. Paid off yesterday. We both liked it. Big batting total for uh, David Ortiz and the Red Sox. Yep. Good price point. Another guy that, I mean, he's been doing it forever. It just feels like people don't love, uh, they treat him like a non-sexy name, but all he does is hit year in and year out. Above average power, he's at home, so he's got the green monster to pepper with doubles. Or maybe he reaches the seats again like he did last night, but uh, gets gets Phil Klein, who throwing in relief was, barely, was just getting averaging over 90 miles per hour. Guessing he won't be averaging that as a starter probably going to lose a tick or two because that's typically what happens when these guys get stretched out and throw a starter so i mean we're talking about a guy with unexciting stuff against a really good hitter in david ortiz and vegas really likes the red Sox to score some runs tonight hasn't been a four and a half run total you want the number three hitter from that lineup uh with that kind of betting total absolutely um i'm with you there it was a great play last night gonna be another one tonight um, moving on to second base, I love Brian Dozier against a weak lefty and Jeff yep. Block, $3,800. We talked about him yesterday on a podcast about what he does to lefties. And uh, Francisco Liriano, a much, much better lefty than uh, Jeff Locke, and he took him yard. So Dozier is really heating up. I mean, he's got three home runs in his last four games. I love playing him against lefties. DraftKings has him priced up a little bit, $4,600. $3,800 on panel is a great price for a guy with his upside. I'm, I'm loving that. Outside of that, I'm going to be looking at Chase Utley once again in Coors Field. He's a guy that just really wasn't getting it going. Maybe he just needed a couple trips to Coors. Um, he's, his, uh, and uh, against Arizona, had a good game his last three games. 16, 9, and 11 on DraftKings. Still batting just 148, but getting some middle-of-the-lineup exposure to Eddie Butler. 
I'm a big fan of tonight. And somehow his price still just three three k on Vandal as well. So those are my uh, my two main targets here. On uh, yeah, Dozier definitely my top play at the position. Um, I also like Utley getting some some Coors Field exposure. Uh, adding to that mix, I will say Neil Walker is a strong play again. Still really cheap, thirty nine hundred dollars on DraftKings, under three thousand dollars checking in at uh, twenty eight on FanDuel. Hit second, uh, delivered yesterday when the rest of the Pirates lineup was was mediocre and middling outside of the uh, the homer from Pedro Alvarez and some contributions from Gung Ho Kong. But um, Mike Palfrey really bad against left handed batters. The switch hitting. Walker, much better against righties than lefties. Really like him if you're looking for some salary relief while not sacrificing uh, hitting skills and lineup spot. Uh, so he's a guy that I'm going to be targeting fairly heavily. Um, Howie Kendrick doesn't look bad at 4,100. Better against lefties and righties. Could drive his ownership down in GPPs. Lincecum actually better against left-handed batters and right-handed batters. So that does play into Kendrick's hands. Kendrick, it's a favorable lineup spot, hitting third, typically in front of world beater Adrian Gonzalez. No, AT&T Park is not the best venue for run scoring, but I'll take some Howie Kendrick shares probably. And uh, also looking at uh, Daniel Murphy, if you're not using Carlos Martinez, does struggle with lefties, $3,700 on uh, DraftKings. I believe still only third base eligible on FanDuel, unfortunately, but... uh, Definitely some good left-handed. Oh, no, he is back to second base eligible. 2,800 on FanDuel. Good to see him back at the keystone position because he has more value there. Um, so I definitely like some Murphy. And then if you want to go uber cheap, we're going to go with the guy that I, I'm going to be writing up in today's GPP article. Ricky Weeks, $3,400 on DraftKings. Minimum salary on FanDuel. Really hits left-handed pitching uh, and uh, gets a break from Safeco Park to play at Camden Yards tonight. So I like him against Wei Yin Chen. Yeah, and I mean, if he, we've seen him leading off. We've seen him hitting fifth. So he's either going to have run scoring opportunities or RBI opportunities. A lot of things going in Ricky Weeks' favor tonight. I'm with you there. He's going to be one of my favorite punts tonight in uh, GPPs and probably even in some cash games as well. All right, moving on here to third base where, of course, we got some big bats out here as we always do. Um, Adrian Beltre is a guy who's really been getting it going. Obviously, you prefer him against the lefty, but he gets Joe Kelly today, who's not a very good righty. Um, he's, he's certainly got some big-time upside. Um, elsewhere, you're certainly looking at Nolan Arenado being at home. You like him better against lefties as well, but I want as much exposure as I can get to this Colorado game tonight. Ten-run total, two bad, bad, bad pitchers. So I love going that route as well. And then if you want some other options at third base, base Michael Franco, once again, he was huge last night. Almost $5,000 on DraftKings. And I was one of the people looking at it like, you know, he's hitting well, but that's a ridiculous price. All he did was go three for four with a double and three RBIs and 19 points. So if you're one of the people that went contrarian and paid up for him, well done. $4,400 tonight, a little bit of a discount against the bad Eddie Butler. Uh, I like him a lot as one of my uh, one of my favorite big upside third base plays tonight. Yeah, uh, I agree. Franco hitting in a favorable lineup slot right out of the gate uh, for 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 the Phillies. So you have to like that. Been hitting fifth behind uh, Ryan, or I'm sorry, fourth behind Ryan. Huff. No, fifth. Sorry, again, uh, Sizemore third. It took me a second to get that lineup in, yeah. in, in my head. Uh, Howard fourth, and then Frankel fifth. So he's getting that that important top five lineup spot. Going to see some people chasing Josh Donaldson's dong from yesterday. But you know what? Understandable. Gets fly ball pitcher Jared Weaver at home. Get a slight discount today because he is facing a righty. $4,600 on DraftKings. Um, $3,700 on FanDuel. I have no problem going that route. Unfortunately, it is going to drive his ownership up probably just a bit in GPPs. But... Um, hard to argue with what he's done. Jimmy Paredes, switch hitter against Ro- Rowenis Elias at Camden Yards. Um, not a bad play either. Um, I do prefer some of the other third basemen that we named, but Paredes is really hitting the ball hard. Gets another, gets a good lineup spot assignment, so I do like him just a little bit. And then uh, probably my favorite play at third base when factoring in price point tonight is going to be Mike Moustakis. Hitting second typically for the Royals, gets Jason Marquis. I do expect Marquis to struggle. He's a big dog in a game with a betting total of eight. Uh, so Vegas or odds makers, whether they're online or Vegas, doesn't really matter. But um, odds makers like the Royals to score some runs tonight. I'll take their number two hitter who gets a platoon advantage over Jason Marquis and pocket some of that extra money. 4200 on DraftKings. And uh, 
I believe 2,600 uh, on FanDuel. So really getting some salary relief if you use him and not sacrificing a lot in terms of upside and offensive talent if you grab him. Yeah, absolutely. Big time upside there. Um, now we're going to move on here to a thin position, as it always is, shortstop. Troy Tulowitzki didn't have a great game last night, but showing some signs, had a two-run double, had a walk. I mean, we're, we're just looking for progress at this point for Troy Tulowitzki. And, I mean, you're not going to get a much better matchup than this one. Obviously, you prefer a lefty. Same old story here, but he is getting a guy in Severino Gonzalez who's allowed 15 hits in seven innings pitched so far, just five strikeouts. Contact pitcher, giving up a lot of hits. Recipe for disaster. Obviously, Vegas knows that. That's why it's a 10-run total. I think I said last night I wasn't paying for Tulo. I think I might be paying for Tulo tonight, especially in some tournaments. You're going to want that, that big bat. Yeah, and uh, uh, not a prohibitive price point on DraftKings, just $4,500 that is very affordable. Um, a little bit ha- harder to budget for on FanDuel at $4,400, especially if you're going to be using uh, Ross. But if you are paying down and, the, and you want to stick Tulowitzki on some of your Rodon rosters or your Martinez rosters or whoever these other cheaper pitchers are that we're looking at, that's not a bad play. Uh, I like Hanley Ramirez a bit at DraftKings. Of course, check the lineup card to make, he's, make sure he's in there. Uh, he had one of the more awkward slides. I've seen in quite a while last night in the Rangers game. Basically, he went knee first. Like, I don't think he could have made it any more difficult on himself sliding into second base. Got in there safely, so I guess the awkwardness helped him get in there because the throw clearly beat him there, but he he beat it. So I, who am I to question Hanley's awkwardness? But uh, stayed in the game, did come out for a defensive reserve later. I'm guessing that was more about getting a better defender in left field since Hanley uh, still very much an infielder player. Uh, masquerading as an outfielder at this point. But um, if that knee maybe bothered him this morning or whatever, or ballooned, um, he could be out of the lineup. But as long as he's in it, I like him as a really high upside play. At $4,900, I'm guessing people are going to shy away from that price point, so you're going to get some low ownership. So I really like uh, Hanley tonight if, um, if, as long as he's in the lineup. Like him in the outfield at FanDuel, where he's actually priced more affordably, and you can get him at under $4,000. Uh, some other shortstops that I'm looking at tonight um, include, uh, sorry about that, uh, Andrelton Simmons against Jake Odorizzi. Been hitting in a favorable lineup spot. Now, you'd like a lefty as opposed to a righty, but not the worst price point. Um, just $3,800 at uh, at DraftKings. Not not bad for his lineup spot. But the guy that I really like is Jung Ho Kong. Uh, Mike Palfrey a pitcher that we want to attack. I think some people might be soured after last night's Pirates game. Uh, can't fault Gong. Uh, had multiple hits last night, hitting fifth for the Pirates. Has really forced their hand and gotten himself in the lineup. Uh, maybe he sits, but I doubt it. The way he's hitting, uh, whether he's playing third base or shortstop, I would expect to see him in the lineup, probably hitting fifth again. So I'm, I'm all over Kong. Yeah, I'm with you there. He's a guy that still seems to fly under the radar while Jordy Mercer has been absolutely terrible. So, uh, yeah, I'm with you there. He Once again, maybe you're right, low ownership. That's exactly what you're looking for in a big slate like this. So he could be a nice sneaky play. Uh, moving on to the outfield here, there's going to be some guys that we really want to look at from Coors Field, of course. Ben Revere is a guy I really like, more on FanDuel. Uh, 4500 on DraftKings is really expensive. Um, you're looking at Carlos Gonzalez, who wasn't, wasn't great last night, but $3,200 on FanDuel is just really good price for him still. Um, I know we both like Adam Jones, of course. Especially on FanDuel, once again, $3,500 against the lefty. Love that. Why don't you uh, throw out a couple more names that you like here in the outfield? Well, uh, I'll throw out one that I, I think he might be flying below the radar. This Bryce Harper guy is pretty good. <laughs> I, the fact is, the price, it's not going to keep his ownership super low. He's going to be owned. But I, I just, it, it's expensive enough that it's still going to, uh, artificially deflate his ownership a little bit. And he gets Adam Warren, who's not good against re- left-handed batters. And, uh, I mean, the guy's from another planet right now. Um, I-, I think the other thing that's going to help him is a lot of people are going to be on Nelson Cruz against the lefty tonight, Wei and Chen. So uh, if you want similar, maybe even higher upside, uh, at least at DraftKings, he's only 200, Harper's only $200 more than, than Cruz. So I think you're going to see Cruz more heavily owned. Nothing wrong with owning Cruz, by the way. Gets to go back to Camden Yards again. A high upside play. But at 6200 I'm guessing his ownership's going to be fairly low on FanDuel just because people can't afford him. Yeah. And at DraftKings, 5700 you can do enough around the rest of the diamond to squeeze him on there. So I'm going to keep beating the drum for Harper. I, 
I know people are going to say, you know, you need that homer for him to deliver at that price point or or something similar to that, maybe multiple hits and multiple RBIs. But if you want to tell me that Harper's not capable of that, I'm going to tell you you're crazy. Um, another big ticket item that I like, uh, Giancarlo Stanton against Brett, uh, against not Brett Anderson, Chase Anderson. Chase Anderson actually has a reverse platoon split, so that plays into the favor of Giancarlo. Um, again, I don't... Not just chasing long home runs, but uh, he certainly can deliver them with the best of them. I like Hanley in the outfield tonight, again, if he's in the lineup. Uh, Got to get those Rockies hitters like you're talking about. Uh, I also like um, Jay Bruce if you're looking for a value play at FanDuel. Uh, gets that favorable platoon split against Jeremy Guthrie. Doesn't get the benefit of hitting at Great American Ballpark, but he does appear to be hitting, heating up, and we know that Bruce is about as streaky a hitter as there comes in the game. When he gets hot, he gets white hot. So I do like uh, Jay Bruce a bit tonight. Uh, Jack Peterson, $3,900 on DraftKings. Seems like a steal against Tim Lincecum. Really hard to argue with that price point, especially when you uh, factor in his lineup spot and power potential. Um and then beyond that, we got Ricky Weeks outfield eligible at DraftKings and uh, definitely want to get some of him. Uh, what other names do you got, Justin? Well, I know that there's a guy that uh, that you were talking about, and I don't, I don't think I just heard you say his name, Steve Pierce. Correct, yes. Yeah, so uh, you like him against the lefty. He hasn't really done it this year, but his numbers before this year, especially last year, all year, absolutely destroyed left-handed pitching. So don't let this this year's numbers fool you. This guy crushes lefties. $3,700 on DraftKings is a phenomenal price for this guy. And he's got a nice price on uh, FanDuel to $2,800. So nice little discount bargain Ben play for you there. Um, elsewhere in the outfield, um, I've been trying to look cheap. I've been trying to find you know the, that $2,000 outfielder, the Jimmy Paredes that we had there for a little while. No one really <laughs> no one really down there. I mean, I was trying to find a super cheap guy. A guy that has been hitting the ball really well since it came up is Todd Cunningham. $2,600 on DraftKings. Um, he's played four games so far. First game went three for four with a double, then three for four, then two for four. Only one for three last night, but had a double again. I mean, $2,600 for a almost a bare minimum punt there. I like that play a lot there if you're really just trying to make your big stack in your GPP. And he's minimum salary on FanDuel as well. And he gets Jake Odorizzi, so we know Odorizzi's a good, he's above average pitcher, but we know at times, um, he hasn't shown it yet this year, but at times he's prone to implosion. So I like that him as uh, my, my favorite cheap option there. Um, I'll, yeah. I'll add one more around to that price point. Go um, going to go $2,800 Chris Colabello. Um, didn't deliver last night, but he does get fly ball happy Jared Weaver tonight. And uh, if you're looking for some one-offs to mix in with your stacks, grabbing power is always a great way to do it. Um, and Colabello at home, uh, Roger center, Great uh, home run venue for right-handed batters. Jared Weaver's fly ball rate. Um, going to be problems for him tonight. I'm just going to say going to be, not could be. They're going to be problems for him tonight. Somebody's going to be taking him deep. Uh, maybe it's Colabello. Maybe it's a couple somebody's. Maybe Colabello takes him deep twice. I don't know. But um, at $2,800, it's hard to argue with that price. Uh, gives you that flexibility to add some of these big ticket items like a Bryce Harper, like I'm talking about, or uh, offsetting the cost of grabbing a, a Ross, a Tyson Ross as your starting pitcher. So I do like some Calabello, and, and uh, I, I definitely second the uh, Cunningham endorsement. Uh, hit well up in the upper minor, so he does have a track record of hitting um, as well, so I, I do like him a bit. All right, we're going to go ahead and wrap things up by telling you if you're playing GPPs tonight and you have no Bryce Harper, good luck with your money tonight. Get yourself some <laughs> Bryce Harper like Josh said. The guy is out of his mind right now. So follow us on Twitter at DF Cafe and find us for all of our great content at DailyFantasyCafe.com. We've got all kinds of content to help you win tonight, and we will see you again tomorrow.